are talking about the church in Sardis this week. I'm excited for these questions, but first, let's start off. Let's ask a question and have a little bit of fun. Have you ever gotten really sleepy while you were driving, like doing an all-nighter, or just gotten really sleepy while you were driving? What have you done to keep yourself awake? Share your best tactics with your group for not dozing off while you're driving. I'll tell you mine real quick. Last time we went through the night down to Virginia, um, I drank. I had a lot of drinks with me, not like alcoholic, clearly, but like beverages. And um, and and I wouldn't let myself go to the bathroom. And that was torture. And trust me, you're not going to sleep in that state. But that was what I did. Um, I've used Red Bull, uh, espresso double shots by Starbucks, things like that. What have you done? What are some of the things you've done to keep yourself awake? All right, in our next section here in The Word, what I'm going to have you do is open your Bibles up as a group, have somebody in your group go ahead and read uh, the letter to the church in Sardis that Jesus spoke through the Apostle John. Let's start our group time soaking ourselves in the Word and getting what Jesus said to the churches in front of us so that we can answer the questions. Go ahead, dive into that. All right, personal reflection time. So let's take a minute and look. First question, what did Jesus say, mean when he said to the church in Sardis, wake up? Take a minute, talk about it. Not real long, just real quick. What do you think he meant? This shouldn't take too long. I want to quick remind you of what happened in the city of Sardis and then ask some questions. Do you remember that they were invaded, but they were actually, uh, they were surrounded and they were besieged, but they actually weren't breaking under the siege. They were withholding pretty well or withstanding it pretty well until what? A night watchman falls asleep, his helmet falls off, and he goes down and sneaks out a secret entrance into the city and he gets his helmet and goes back in. But what happened was some spies from the other army saw where he went in and out. They found the secret entrance. They broke, They snuck in and they overthrew the city. They snuck in through a place because someone had not been alert. The word Jesus uses in the Greek in this is I am awake in the night watch. That's the literally the wake up actually means I be, a, be watching, be alert on the night watch. Stand up and notice what's going on. When you think of it in those terms, answer these questions. Are there any areas in your life where you should be watching and keeping watch and maybe have fallen asleep? Talk about it in your groups. Remember when we were talking a few minutes ago in the start of group to having some fun, talking about how you stay awake when you're driving long distances? Let's do this. Let's ask this question. What can you do spiritually to keep yourself alert? What can you do to stay awake and keep yourself spiritually awake on this road we travel in life? All right, eat this book. This section we named after the book by Eugene Peterson who says, take, take the word of God, chew on it, take it in, let its nutrients get into your whole body and give life to your bones. I love this section that we're gonna be using in groups. Eat this book. Do me a favor, read Revelation chapter three, verse two, take a look at it, and then we'll dive into the question. All right, thinking back to the story I told in the teaching this week where you, um, you tell uh, five kids, hey, we're going to Disney World, and you tell them when to meet, you know, and, and they all show up. I guess you're just somebody taking people's kids to Disney, but in the story, that's what it is. And you take the kids, and two of them show, uh, three of them show up with tickets to Disney World from the, the company. 
Two of them show up, and they've made their own tickets. They're like, we didn't get them from Disney, but we made our own. But you didn't want to be mean, so you're like, all right, everybody in the van. So you drive 1,246 miles south. You get to Disney World. It's been an exciting road trip. They're talking about the rides they're going to go on. They want to get fast passes. They're all excited. They're so happy to get like a Mickey ice cream bar. And they get to the gates, and two kids are staring at you, weeping, while the other three are like, yay, and running in. And they look at you, and they say, why? Why didn't you tell us that our tickets wouldn't work? Why did you drive us all this way and never tell us what's going on, that what we had wasn't enough? And you are like, well, I was being nice. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. I didn't want to inconvenience you. I didn't want, I didn't want to ruin your road trip. Here's the question. How are you being nice like the driver in that story? but actually excluding people from knowing Jesus and experiencing eternal life because you're not telling them that the ticket they made, the religion they practice, actually won't get them in. There's only one way, and they aren't on it. How are you in your life being like that driver? The people of Sardis worshipped at the temple of Sibylle, and the temple of Sibylle would um, require you to have a perfect white spotless robe to get in. If you didn't have that and you were all grungy or maybe just dressed like me, they would say, no, you can't come in. You had to be in a white robe. Once they entered the temple and began um, taking part in the religion that followed Sibylle, it was anything but pure. It was absolutely broken and defiled. In fact, their robes got dirtied and soiled and wrecked inside that temple. But in Christ, we know that he loved us while we were still sinners. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. I can't remember the scripture reference off the top of my head. Google it. You'll find it right away. But that's in the, I think it's in Romans. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. I'm going to go with Romans 3. So we know that to be true. Jesus is the one who gives us a white robe to wear. We don't have to go get one on our own. He gives us a white robe. We are dressed in his righteousness. So how have you, here's the question, how have you tried to manufacture purity on your own terms at some point before in your own life? So when I said while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you, it's Romans 5. Somebody just looked it up and told me so. Does close count in Bible references? Close, but no context? (laughs) Okay, here we go. Question number two in this section of Eat This Book. What did it feel like for you when you were forgiven and put on the righteousness of Christ? What was it like for you? Remember back to that day when the sweetness of your salvation was fresh and new and you were pure. What was it like for you and what did it feel like to be forgiven and put on the righteousness of Christ? Eat This Book Part 2 is for some groups who maybe you have some extra time, you want to dig a little deeper and wrestle with some things out of the scriptures. so I'm going to invite you, go ahead and read. For, uh, 2 Peter 3, 1 to 10, I'll be back with a couple of questions for you to wrestle through. Question number one, have you had a false sense of security in something like time, money, status, and strength? Talk to your group about those things, the the false sense of security you've held in some of those areas. Take some time and talk to your group about how you felt when you realized that it could be gone or what it felt like when maybe those securities were removed and you were kind of laid bare and you realized that they didn't provide any security. Talk to your group about it.
Now take some time and talk about what it was like when you put your faith in God and found your security in him, even though your circumstances may have been crumbling, your God was holding you up and securely giving you peace and security in a time of great unrest. Talk with your group about it. And I just want to say, um, these are great conversations to have because it reveals how many things we have our faith in and our faith must only be in Jesus Christ. So talk about that time. Describe it to your group and share together. One last thing for you groups. Uh, The first group that turns in the group's questions for the Revelation Talk Show, you will receive an all-expense trip paid to Captain Sunday, which is opening this coming weekend. I'm super excited about it because I've got a passion for dairy. I mean, clearly. (laughs) All right, so if you get your group's questions in first, your whole group will be treated to Captain Sunday. Yeah, that's right. I think we're going any size. Extra large, flurry, cookie dough, Reese's, one item? Why? Matt, don't listen to Matt, except when he preaches. You should probably listen then. But right now, Matt's not in the know on this. All right, so get your group's questions in so we can send you to Captain Sunday and um, help you get your summer body back. I'm dyslexic, so that's not how it works at all. Enjoy. Enjoy.